Okay, welcome to another video here on loveyourpencil.com. This one has to do with inference, inference, and things like uh, not only the word inference, but other related words like to infer, and then you hear things like inferential question, literal questions, and so forth. And this is a, uh, a topic that sometimes confuses people, and sometimes people have a hard time with the whole thing about inference and inferential questions. And uh, I'm going to try to make it so that you understand it a little better. So what is inference? Inference occurs when you know something but nobody ever told you about it and you never read it anywhere. That's it. You used your knowledge and your experience to infer what you know. All right, so let's take a look at this picture right here. Okay, This here, now if I say to you something, if I ask you a question like, what color are the walls? The answer is white. It's right in front of you. If I say, what is the color of the cup on the counter here? Uh, you're going to say, it's a yellow cup. Those are all literal questions. Those are questions that can be answered by just looking at the picture and really not thinking that much. But if I ask you a question like, what has just happened in this picture? You And if you said that there was a fire by the stove, then you're correct. And so that's what you call an inferential uh, question. And, and you had to use inference to, to uh, get the answer because you don't see any fire. I mean, you said that there was a fire, but you didn't see the fire. If, if there was fire in this picture and you said there is a fire, then that would be a literal question. It would not be an inferential question, but what you saw is fire damage, and you inferred that there must have been a fire, even though you didn't see a fire. And that's the nature of inference. When you use your mind and your experience to come to a conclusion that uh, that's correct, um, well, it doesn't have to be correct in order for it to be inference, but you come to a conclusion, but it's not based on something specifically that you were told or something specifically that you that you read or you saw it's based on you know you're drawing you're drawing a conclusion based on evidence that you see or hear or read and that's inference so let's um let's go take a look at the document which you can download from the site just go to uh, loveyourpencil.com and search for inference and you'll get the page and you can click on the on this document and download it from the site so <clears throat> by the way when you say inferential question it's a question that requires inference to answer and a literal question is a totally different kind of question it's a question that doesn't require inference to answer so why learn about inference you may wonder but that's one of the most important ways that we figure out and understand the truth if you're ever uh, if you're well you may not already but you will eventually be uh, serving on a jury and you're gonna listen to people give their different sides of their of the case and you're going to use inference to figure out which one is telling the truth. Here's an example. Let's say you bought a cake for your sister's birthday party, right? And the cake is sitting in the refrigerator and this is what it looks like. It's got blue icing and you tell everyone in the house, don't touch the cake. Half an hour later you see a little brother and your little brother's got a smear of blue icing on his mouth. And you ask your little brother, hey, did you touch the cake? And your little brother goes, no, I didn't touch it. I didn't go anywhere near it. Well, because you're able to infer, you know that he's lying because that's the only blue thing you have in the house and there's blue icing on his mouth and he had some of the cake or at least tasted some of the icing. And you knew this to be the case even though no one, you didn't see him touch the cake you, no one told you he touched a cake, but because you saw blue icing, you put two and two together and you inferred he must have touched a cake because there's nothing else with blue icing in the house. So you know he's lying. And that's the way, uh, that's inference. And that, because you inferred, you inferred what he did. And there's an old saying, this might, this might help, we smell smoke and we infer fire. In other words, when you see smoke, you figure out, even though you don't see the fire, you you infer that there must have been a fire. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, this is just, uh, I'm not going to go through every single thing, but take a look at this picture here of these athletes. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty, pretty cool picture, and they're all very happy. 
and uh, some of the things that you can look at in the picture you can figure out by inference and others you would just use uh, use sort of literal thinking and I'll say what I'll show you what I mean if I were to ask you what color are the women wear uh, what color is the uniform that the women are wearing and if you said green that's a literal question that's a literal question if I asked you are the women smiling and you said yes that's a literal question. All you have to do is just look at the picture and you get the answer. But if I asked you a question like, um, uh, you know, are these women a member of a team? And the answer is yes, but it doesn't say on the picture these women are members of a team, but you inferred it because they're all wearing the same uniforms. And, uh, and therefore you, you came to the conclusion that they were all members of a team and you're correct. And I could ask you a question like, are they happy? And if you said yes, then you used inference to determine that they were happy. You saw them smiling, and you saw them excited and jumping sort of up and down, and, uh, and you inferred that they were happy. And if I said, well, what do you think they're happy about? And you said, well, because they must have just uh, won a race, you're using inference because you, nothing in this picture said there's no words that say they are running a race or they have just run a race but you figured out they're, they've got running shoes they've got a running uniform on they're on what looks like a running track in the background so they must have run some sort of athletic competition or some sort of race and that's the difference between uh, literal and inferential questions is that if you can see it right in front of you it's literal if you have to think and use your experience it's inferential and here is some uh, a lot more detail about the picture. Here are some samples of inferential statements and literal statements. And what I put in here is how do you know? Uh, how do you know? Like, for for example, here's an inferential statement. This moment is one of the happiest of their lives. Well, how do you know that? Because their smiles are very wide and they're hugging and jumping. So there's the evidence that it's a very happy moment in their lives. All right, and you can just look at these details. Let's move on. Uh, there's something else called written inference. I mean, you can you have visual inference right here. It's what we do, and then it's also important that you understand written inference. And this is what this is how it works. It's basically the same thing. When you read a story, you can sort of read in between the lines, sort of, you know, what's behind the words. And I'm not going to read this whole thing, but you should just download the uh, the document and read it. But here it says, you're going to have to move a lot faster, son, the foreman said, frowning, and Javier's stomach sank. Okay, and so if I said to you, what did the foreman say, and you say, the foreman said, you're going to have to move a lot faster, son, that's a literal question. That's a literal question. But if I, if I said to you, um, uh, what, how did the foreman think, what did the foreman think about Javier's uh, job performance, uh, you know, it doesn't say the foreman was unhappy with his job performance, but if you said he wasn't happy, you're right, because it said that the foreman was frowning. And so you figured out that a frown means that he's unhappy, and that is, you're using inference when you do this. And there, there's a bunch of other uh, examples here. There's a couple of examples of inferential statements and the reason why they're inferential. And then you have the opportunity to practice and enter two more inferential statements. And then, of course, there's a couple of inferential questions, and then, uh, and then it explains why it's inferential and how we, how we know the answer. And then you have an opportunity to enter a couple more inferential uh, questions. In other words, there are questions that need you to think about uh, about what's going on with the story, sort of reading in between the lines, figuring out what's really going on and answering uh, and answering the question and those are uh, and those are inferential questions at the end here is a is a uh, an assessment and this assessment just tests to see just how well you understand inference uh, there are 10 statements and you read them and circle true if the statement is true and false if the statement is false there is eight here on this side and then there's two more having to do with this picture which is on the other side and uh, if you do them all and get them all right and get a 10 out of 10 that means that you're an expert on inference well I sure hope that this has helped I know that inference can be uh, sometimes tricky 
but after you practice it, uh, thinking about what's really going on behind the scenes and reading in between the lines and using your brains and your experience to figure out the answer to a question, then you will be much, much better at inference. And thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you again in another video.